10 boxers of the early 20th century. We have a hard-hitting lineup on the roster for the best boxers of the early 20th century. So go ahead and like, share, hit that notification bell, and let's begin. Number 1. Sam Langford Langford was rated number 2 by the ring on their list of 100 greatest punchers of all time. Within Sam Langford's ring career, which lasted from 1902 to 1926, he racked up a superb record of 167 wins and just 30 losses and an astonishing 117 knockouts. Even more impressive, Langford fought as a lightweight, welterweight, middleweight, and heavyweight and defeated many legendary world champions of the time in each weight class. Plus, he won the World Colored Heavyweight Championship a record five times between 1910 and 1918. Although he was known as the Boston Terror and the Boston Tar Baby, he was originally from Weymouth Falls, Canada, and his most feared nickname was the Boston Bone Crusher. With the hundreds of battles and poundings that he endured like a true badass, he often fought blind with one eye, being completely blind and the other eye partially blind. Nevertheless, even Jack Johnson, the previous heavyweight who had reigned as the World Colored Heavyweight Champion from 1903 to 1908, was reluctant to set foot in the ring with the Boston Bone Crusher. ESPN referred to him as the greatest fighter nobody knows. Langford stood 5 foot 6 and a half inches and weighed 185 pounds or 84 kilos in his prime. The devastating puncher, even at heavyweight, was considered by boxing historians as experienced as a heavyweight James Tony with the punching power of Mike Tyson. And even when the renowned champion Jack Dempsey claimed that as a young boxer in 1916, he refused a fight with a Boston bone crusher. And Dempsey also said, I think Sam Langford was the greatest fighter we ever had. He finally retired due to blindness and faded away from public memory until 1944 when journalist Al Laney reminded the public of his greatness. Number 2. Jack Dempsey The heavyweight champion of the world whose career lasted from 1914 to 1927 was the most celebrated athlete of his time along the lines of baseball stars and horse racing, which were the most popular in the land of the free at that time. The rakishly handsome and charismatic do-or-die boxer was one of the first to bring 120,000 spectators. He was able to accumulate 61 wins with only 6 losses and 8 draws, with 50 of those opponents being knocked out. His vigor while in the ring was called the fierce two-fisted style. He was truly famous for his aggression and powerful punches complemented with astonishing speed, and that led him to being in the top 100 greatest punchers of all time. His first title was won by pulverizing the jaw of the giant Jess Willard, and he went on to defend his title for five more bouts. Number 3. Jack Johnson Jack Johnson, nicknamed the Galveston Giant, was the 6'2 big man from Galveston, Texas, who became the first African-American world heavyweight boxing champion. It was in 1908 when he became the first African-American to win the world heavyweight crown when he knocked out the reigning champ, Tommy Burns and his reign as champion lasted until 1915. John Arthur Jack Johnson was born on March 31, 1878, and was the son of ex-slaves. And since many slaves were bred for strength, he was the epitome of amazing genes. ESPN referred to him as the precursor to Muhammad Ali, who would dominate in the ring and deliberately provoke and antagonize foes outside the ring. Jack Johnson was shocking, bold, and his free spirit rubbed off white society at the time as arrogant. In one of his greatest fights in Reno, Nevada, he brought in 22,000 fans for his 15-round bout with Jim Jeffries. After his victory, Jeffries said, I could never have whipped Johnson at my best. I couldn't have hit him. No, I couldn't have reached him in a thousand years. Later, Jack Johnson was dubbed a criminal for engaging in prostitution via the Mann Act but it was clear that he was a victim of the old racist system, as his female companion was Caucasian and she traveled with him across state lines on her own free will. So he spent exile in Europe and South America avoiding draconian laws. And finally, the Trump administration showed honor to him by giving him a pardon with the support of Sylvester Stallone, WBC heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder, and retired heavyweight title holder Lennox Lewis, to whom Trump gave most credit to for spearheading the pardon. Number 4. 
Benny Leonard. Another brawler that had a hard knocks life was Benny Leonard, known as the Ghetto Wizard and the Great. For growing up in the rugged Jewish ghettos of the Lower East Side of Manhattan, New York, dominating the lightweight ring from 1911 to 1932. His record stands at 85 wins, 5 losses, and 1 draw, with 70 of those wins being knockouts. At one stage of his life, he went through 154 consecutive bouts without losing. He was an exceptional all-around talent who possessed speed, accuracy, and power in one physique. This incredible ghetto wizard earned him a rank of 8 on the Ring Magazine's list of the 80 best fighters of the last 80 years, number 7 on ESPN's 50 Greatest Boxers of All Time, and number 1 in the International Boxing Research Organization's Lightweights of All Time. He was also inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame, World Boxing Hall of Fame, the National Jewish Sports Hall of Fame, as well as the International Jewish Sports Hall of Fame. He lived in the ring and died in the ring, as he dropped dead after his retirement while refereeing a boxing match in New York. Number 5. Roberto Duran Lightweight, welterweight, junior welterweight, middleweight, the Panamanian boxer Roberto Duran won world championships in four weight divisions, but is unfortunately best remembered for his no-mass loss to Sugar Ray Leonard in 1980. However, Duran's extensive career puts him on the list as he had 103 wins with 70 knockouts and only 60 losses. He was considered a snarling, unstoppable ring monster. Number 6. Willie Pep because of his elusive style, Willie Pep was known as Willow the Wisp. Legendary defensive fighters like Cornell Whitaker, Tommy Loughran, the Phantom of Philly, and Floyd Mayweather Jr. are of the same ilk as Willie Pep. Boxing trainers even said that you couldn't hit him in the ass with a handful of rights. Legend has it that he once won a round without throwing a single punch, which testifies to his defensive talents and indicates his alias of Willow the Wisp. In his career from 1940 to 1966, he racked up 230 wins, 11 losses, and 65 knockouts. He won the featherweight title at 20 against Albert Chalky Wright, who Willie Pep considered the greatest featherweight who ever lived. And when Willie the Wisp was 25 years old, he had already earned a legendary status. Number 7. Joe Lewis Joe Lewis, a.k.a. the Brown Bomber, heavyweight champion of the world from 1937 to 1949, an almost 12-year streak that set a new world record. Speaking of records, the Brown Bombers was 68 wins, 3 losses, with 54 knockouts. He wasn't only the pride of the black American community, he was also the pride of America, as his most legendary fight against German boxer Max Schmeling. Although Schmeling defeated Lewis in their first bout in 1936, the 1938 battle was portrayed by the press as a battle between Nazi ideology and American Constitutional Republic ideals of freedom. And in 1938, Lewis defeated Schmeling by a knockout in the first round, which solidified his stature as a true red, white, and blue Americano, which united Americans of all colors under the creed of the land of the free. Joe Lewis was and still is an American hero. Number 8. Henry Armstrong Simultaneously, Henry Armstrong held world championship titles in three weight divisions. This achievement sets him as the upper class of the boxing arena. The featherweight, lightweight, and welterweight champ boxed under the name Melody Jackson in his amateur years from 1929 to 1932. With a record of 151 wins, 21 losses, and 101 knockouts, he defended 26 world title fights. Henry was known as Hammer and Hank, Homicide Hank and Hurricane Hank because he was a fury whirlwind fighter whose diehard motion overwhelmed opponents. It was considered to be a non-stop flux of suffocating fists. He faced 17 world champions and defeated 15. As one of the most intelligent boxers of all time, he was ordained a Baptist minister in 1951 after retiring from the ring. And in 1954, Armstrong was inducted into Ring Magazine's Boxing Hall of Fame. Number 9. Muhammad Ali Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Muhammad Ali deserves to be on the list for the greatest martial artists of all time as he created his own style. Like a chapter from Sun Tzu's The Art of War, Ali was able to psychologically manipulate his opponents and have the battle won before he was fought. 
As the first to win heavyweight championship of the world three times, he was banned from the ring for three years and confined in cages for refusing to fight in the Vietnam War. However, when he returned to the ring, he brought the fight of the century in 1971, even though he lost to Joe Frazier. But in 1974, he regained the title against George Foreman, as he showed us the rope-a-dope and truly became the thriller in Manila. Ali reinvented the heavyweight strategy of combat with his speed and athleticism. Number 10. Sugar Ray Robinson Considered one of the greatest boxers of all time, Sugar Ray Robinson held the world welterweight title from 1946 to 1951, and by 1958, he had become the first boxer to win a divisional world championship five times. He turned pro in 1940 and won his first 40 fights. Over his extensive 25-year career, Robinson won the world welterweight and middleweight crowns and was dubbed pound for pound the best, with 175 wins, 19 losses, and 109 knockouts. Who else do you think should be on the list for the best boxers of the early 20th century? We'll see you in the comments section. And of course, give a thumbs up for the boxing greats. Subscribe, ring the notification bell, and share this video with your Fight Club compadres.